Hey, my name is Shadow Sense, and are you feeling just real chill? You just want to sit back, relax, unbutton your pants, untighten your belt, maybe grab a mug of coffee or tea, or in my case, milk, or maybe you want some water or alcohol, whatever, it's your choice. Because tonight, I'm starting my playthrough, or should I say read-through, of Sakura Spirit. Um, I just realized it said Sakura wrong. Apologies. Anyway, so I don't know why, the, um, in my YouTube recommended feed, it kept re recommending me uh, the Game Grumps Steam Train series for Sakura Spirit, and I watched it all the way through, and I was like, why didn't they finish this game? I don't know what happens. Uh, but I apparently it does have a plot. That's what Wikipedia told me. It's a good thing Wikipedia doesn't spoil the ending either. Anyway, enough of the chatter. I'm going to get right to the game. Every person has a dream they wish to pursue. Yet, as people grow up, they often come to realize the truth. Dreams are nothing more than fairy tales. Ooh, starting off with a bit of a bummer. That's always nice. At least, that's what most people say. Then, what about those who do end up accomplishing their dreams? Are they merely incredibly lucky? Every man has a dream he wants to accomplish. However, there is something really important you should know, my boy. A real man doesn't give up on his dream, no matter what overwhelming challenges he might have to face. I still remember those foolish words my dad used to say. But despite their silly nature, I found myself inspired by them. Ever since I was a young child, I've been interested in martial arts. It didn't matter whether I watched a match on television or read a manga about some heroic martial artist. It has always been my dream to become a martial artist one day. Of course, it was a bit childish of me to think that I could become a hero simply by learning martial arts. Even though I already understood that superheroes were nothing more than figments of my imagination, I still had a desire to use my strength for the sake of others. My name is Gushikin Takahiro, a 17-year-old rising judo star. And no, that's not me bragging. I'm actually about to take part in a tournament two weeks from now that could make or break my career on an international level. Of course, I was excited about the opportunity to finally accomplish my dreams and represent my country at a sport that I loved, but the same excitement also made me feel incredibly nervous. And while those worrisome thoughts haunted my mind, a familiar voice resounded from outside the window. Oi, Takakun, get your button gear! Okay, okay, I'll be right there, Koyomi. And black screen, woo! Couldn't bother to draw this. Not wanting to keep Koyomi waiting, I quickly dashed toward the front door to let her in, not even realizing I was still in my pajamas. Hold on a second, Koyomi. Gotta grab my shoes before we head off to school. Really? I never realized our school had a strict uniform or sleepwear pro policy. Nice jammies, by the way. Did you borrow them from your mom? For a moment, my eyes drifted downwards, noticing that I was indeed wearing my pajamas. I let out a, gro a groan of annoyance and marched back towards my room. Ah, there's nothing wrong with my jammies. The Golden Knight is a famous comic book hero in the, in the West. Besides, not everyone prefers to sleep naked like you. Mumbling those words, I start stripping out of my clothes, not, not particularly minding the presence of the girl behind me. That only happened once. You know very well it was super hot that night. And jeez, warn me before you strip naked in front of me, you idiot. You didn't seem to mind when we were little. Maybe you want me to turn around instead? No, stop! Don't make me kick your ass! I decided I'd tease her enough and quickly pulled on my pants, proceeding with the remaining few items of clothing before I was suitably dressed for school. Besides, I had a reason for being so distracted. You've been distracted a lot lately. What's going on in that hollow skull of yours? It's that upcoming match. I have no idea how anyone can remain calm when an international career is at stake. I wouldn't be surprised if I made up enough doomsday scenarios to fill up the apocalypse genre. Oh, you're right, the judo thing. I'm sure you'll do fine. I've seen some of your matches and you kick butt. And, of course, if you're really worried, you could always pray. Pray? What? Don't tell me you don't know. It's one of the school's legends. 
Apparently, there's some shrine out in the forest that, if you pray to it, brings you good l good luck. Ichikawa-san, is that how he's? Yeah. Ichikawa-san said that his sister prayed to it the night before her exam, and she got a perfect score. A shrine that is said to bring you good luck. Sounds like bogus. What? Oh, that is weird grammar. Sounds like bogus to me. It's just mm, don't need that like there. Sounds bogus to me, but at this point, I'm willing to try anything. I guess. I'll ask Ichikawa-san about the location. I'm not exactly in the mood to get lost in the forest and end up in modern day Tarzan. Well, whatever. If you do go looking, at least send me a message to let me know. And will you hurry up? We're gonna be late again! A hero is never too early, nor are they too late. They arrive precisely when they are needed. They tried for the Lord of the Rings quote, but uh... Didn't work. But for the sake of avoiding detention... Let's hurry. That's a wizard, not a hero genius. How can one person be such a sports nerd and such a geek at the same time? Let's not forget the Casanova and Man of the Year candidate bits. They're important details. I doubt you'd qualify for either one of them, Pajama Boy. Anyway, let us go boldly go where everyone has gone before. To school! Ugh, nerd. Several hours later. Dun dun bah! Ooh, ellipses. Double ellipses. Triple ellipses! Oh, there we are. Later that day, I finally got a chance to talk with, to my classmate about the location of the shrine that Koyomi had mentioned earlier. Gym was the last thing on the schedule for today, so once people got ready to go home, I approached I approached the guy. Hey, Chikawa! Is it true that your sister just... Is it true that your sister discovered some shrine that is said to bring you good luck? <laughs> Let me guess, you want to date her? Well, even though I do have to admit that she's very Dude, that's your sister. That's gross. She's very attractive. I'm afraid she's already going out with someone. Not to mention, you're not her type. I already got my hands full dealing with Kayomi. You can keep your sister to yourself. Gross. Jokes aside, I'm more interested in that shrine. Did she mention where she found it? I don't know where... I didn't know there was anything near the forest aside from the dojo. Oh, well, um, she said something about it being near a river, and quite high up. To be honest, I wasn't paying too much attention when she was going on about it. I mean, she was wearing this top, and it was tight, and... S stop, stop! I seriously don't need to hear the details, and I doubt anyone else is interested. So, do you know anyone who might have heard about the shrine? Are you guys talking- Oh wait, that's someone else. Are you guys- if I can find a voice. Are you guys talking about that lucky shrine out in the forest? The one and only, according to Ichikawa's sister, there's supposed to be one near a river. I don't know about that, but there's this fiery girl at the Asakura Dojo who knows more about it. Wait, are you talking about Ariyama- Arya-sama? About this tall, ridiculously strong, and super scary? That's the one. Oh, in that case, I believe I can still be of help, Takahiro-kun. I know where that place is. Of course you do. We both do. You just want to tag along, don't you? I don't think Arya Senpai will appreciate you visiting her with your usual tricks in mind. Do I need to remind you what happened last time you tried to peek at her after she finished, pra finished practice? Blood. Sweat. Tears. Delicious. <laughs> Shut up! I don't peep on the ladies. That's slander, you know. I should sue you. I would never look upon Arya-sama's glorious body in any state of nudity. Oh, so you haven't seen her naked yet? I've seen a bit of side boob, but the hole I found didn't really let me get a good view of... There we go. Someone called the cops. Ichikawa, the peeping Tom, has confessed. I playfully patted Ichikawa's shoulder as I turned around, grabbing my bag in the process, and prepared to leave. Thanks for the tip, Ichikawa. I'll let the judge know you're most helpful during the interrogation. This is unfair. I was coerced. I won't say another word until I speak to my lawyer. Ellipsy. Elli more ellipses. Woo! Once school was over, I decided to take my chances with a little bit of intel I had managed to obtain from my classmates. If memory served me right, Arya Senpai would be practicing at the dojo today. Of course, I knew her. She was a judo student just like myself, but for whatever reason she had been refusing to compete in any tournament for a while now. 
Arya Senpai, are you around? I shouted her name as I parked my bike, looking around for any sign of the girl. Ya! Ho! Ya! Follow the shouts and you will find her. I grinned briefly as I saw Arya seemingly in the middle of practicing a series of motions, almost as if she was fighting an imaginary opponent. Perhaps now was a perfect opportunity to surprise her a little. I snuck closer, making sure to ma make as little no uh, as little noise as possible. I can't speak! I said this during the Doki Doki Literature Club playthrough, the, uh, the sketchbook playthrough. I can't talk. Mwah. Before I reached a hand toward her shoulder. Arya! Feeling a hand on her shoulder, Arya reacted. She grabbed hold of my hand and with a loud grunt, shifted her weight, curling and tipping me over her shoulder. I didn't have time to brace myself for the impact before I hit the ground like a sack of potatoes. Sha! No one sneaks up on the great Kunoichi Arya! Oh, Taka boy! I didn't realize it was you! I'm sorry, are you okay? Kunoichi? More like Tasmanian Devil. That throw didn't have a shred of mercy in it. There's no mercy in the ring, Taka boy. Better that, better that you learn now than in two weeks' time. Let me guess, you want to do some sparring, don't you? I actually came here to ask you about something, but I guess a little sparring wouldn't hurt. Oh, what do you want to ask? We've got all afternoon, and I could do with a bit of a break anyway. Where to start? You used to take park in a... Yeah, park. You used to take part in a big and important matches in the past, right? Didn't you ever get nervous before getting into the ring? Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's this one time I got so nervous I hid in the kitchen cupboards until my dad found me and dragged me to the car. Of course, that was when I was like eight. Well, obviously I can't go hide it for my match, but one of my friends made this stupid suggestion that I go and pray to some or something. Honestly, at this point, I'll do anything to calm my nerves a little. Taka boy, are you sure about this? You mean the match? Of course I am. I've been practicing judo ever since I was old enough to walk. This is my chance to finally represent this country and the sport I love. Hmm. Arya seemed to think for quite a long time, all the while type tapping her jaw with her finger. Eventually, she snaps her fingers and grabbed a tight hold of me. All right, I'll tell you the way. I'll tell you the way to this shrine I know, but it's gonna require more than a simple clap of your hands and a bob of your head. You need to give something to the shrine, something of value. I'm sorry I'm losing this voice, I'm not a voice actor. I know the voice keeps going every which way, that, this, and the other place, but I'm trying. I'm trying. Bear with me. I guess I have to think of something before we get there. Thanks, senpai. I appreciate the help. We? Oh, no, 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 Taka boy. I'm not going with you. I've got training to do. Besides, you've got to take this step yourself. I could draw you a map and show you an easy way to get back here, but you'll be on your own. You're not tagging along? Not even for a little while? Afraid so, Taka boy. Let me just grab some paper. I'll draw that map for you. After Arya's return, cr quick preparations were made, and I followed the directions noted down on the map. Surprisingly, it wasn't all that far. However, the hint on how to find my way back in case I got lost was a bit sketchy. Just look down and you'll be able to see the roof of the dojo from anywhere on the hill. The forest near the dojo was my first challenge to overcome. A narrow path coiled along the trees and nearby was the river Ichikawa's sister had mentioned. I followed Arya's scribbles with a bit of skepticism, but after an hour or so, I finally arrived at the supposedly legendary shrine. The shrine itself seemed surprisingly well maintained despite being in the middle of nowhere. Made me wonder if someone could be secretly living here. Perhaps some secret martial arts master? The thought of a hermit living and hiding within the shrine in order to prepare himself for an upcoming battle between go good and evil started to- Oh god burps! It started to dwell in my mind. I'm, I apologize. I guess it's too good to be true. I sighed in annoyance at the fact that, aside from the shrine itself, the ground surrounding it seemed completely abandoned. There was no way anyone could be living there. For the time being, I decided to focus on the reason behind my visit. It only took a few moments. Uh, it only took a few moments before I gathered the courage to approach the building. Once inside, I found a rather fancy-looking altar of sorts at the back of the room. I guess this is the thing everyone's talking about. 
Silently, I folded up the map I had been given. Putting it inside my bag, I approached the altar. I was kind of skeptical about the whole religious aspect, so I wasn't too sure if this was actually going to work. And I, I don't even think luck will do me much good in a match like this. In my opinion, there wasn't any room for things like luck in martial arts. Judo is all about using the knowledge you have gained through the training. Uh, of course, a good amount of talent also helps. There was simply no room for something as superstitious as luck. Clearly, this was going to be a match where my experience and talent would be pushed to their limits. Nothing more, and nothing less. How curious. The boy doesn't believe in superstition, and yet he stands here, surrounded by the very thing he denounces. Upon hearing the voice, I looked around, trying to find the source, but there was no one to be seen. Wh who's there? Quite the cliched question, but the right thing to ask is, where am I? What are you talking about? Show yourself! Not yet. Entertain me up for a little while longer, would you? This is a place like no other. Why did you come here? If you do not believe in such as in things such as luck. I came here to prepare myself. Oh, do enlighten me about what this something might be that you are preparing yourself for. I felt a little bit annoyed as the question continued. But maybe if I kept talking to her, it would I would be able to find out where she where Shell was hiding. Oof. I'm preparing for a tournament, a judo match. Judo? What might that be? Seriously, you don't know what judo is? It's a highly skilled combat art. Ah, uh, so you're a warrior, hesitant to go into battle, and came here in hope of finding the resolve to fight. I'm not sure about the warrior part. How fortunate. It just so happens that there's a need for one of your kind. My kind? A hero. The shrine brings fortune to heroes such as yourself. However, every great hero must sacrifice something in return. Sounds like what the others mentioned. Your version sounds better, though. Laughing briefly at the story, I decided to play along and clap my hands together in prayer. So, what's next? Do I offer up my allowance or something? <laughs> Don't be silly. Money is of little importance to, to a hero. For you, the sacrifice will be something of much greater value. I'll be looking forward to seeing what destiny has in store for you. As if on cue, I began to feel nauseated the moment the girl's words reached my ears. My head spinning wildly, slowly I staggered backwards, collapsing onto my back. As my vision grew blurry, the sound of approaching footsteps could be heard. Good luck, hero. You're going to need it. Despite my attempts to get back up, all I managed was a brief look at the girl. The sight of horns and a tail left many questions, but before I had a chance to utter even a single word, my consciousness succumbed to darkness. She hot, though. Rays of sun. Can I read this? Rays of sunlight stirred me back to life, a groan of annoyance leaving my mouth while I tried to get back on my feet. I felt a little bit dizzy, but the first thing I noticed was that I would, was no longer at the shrine. Instead, it looked like the forest near the dojo. Of course, my first thought was to look around to see if I could find the girl from before, but not a trace of her presence remained. To make things even stranger, the path, the path I had followed amidst the trees seemed better maintained than I remembered. I should probably head home. That thought was cut short when the sound of several female voices could be heard nearby. Get back here! Hikage! Stop them at once! Just what do you think I'm doing? I'm chasing them! I'm trying to stop them! Yeah! <laughs> this sounded... This sounded sexual. I apologize. <laughs> Yeah, I think they noticed what's missing, Onisama. Keep running, little one, and we met, and we just might make it. Just when I thought this day couldn't get any weirder, the sound of heavy footfalls could be heard nearby. What in the world is going on here? Further ahead, I saw a couple of girls in fast pursuit of even more girls. However, there was something off about this scene. Something that didn't make any sense. The girls being chased had the ears and tail of an animal, and the pursuers appeared to be armed with a katana and an aginata. You conniving fox! Get back here at once! Return what you stole immediately! Give me back my panties! 
<laughs> hey, Kage, how could you say something loud like that? <laughs> panties, panties. <laughs> I ran out of breath. Panties, panties. Can I just use that voice? I think I'm going to. <laughs> oh no! Help save us from the rampaging women! <laughs> As I watched the girls run off, I couldn't help but find myself struggling with the decision to just leave them be. While I didn't know what in the world was going on, the two girls armed with rather realistic looking props, surely they couldn't be real, had me worried. I couldn't very well call myself a hero if I let something like this go by without acting. I'm so going to regret this. Mumbling in annoyance, I chased after the girls. Hey Kage, go around to the left! Right! I said left! Why do you always undermine me? I wasn't saying right! I, you know what? Never mind, just run after them! As I was chasing the girls, I noticed the trees seemed to be getting denser, making it gradually more difficult to navigate along the path. Onisama, I don't think I can run much more. I'm, I'm starting to feel a bit... Hmm. Just a little longer, Maiko-chan. We're almost... Maiko! Maiko, no! Not that! Not now! Sorry, Onisama. Scissor attack! I arrived just in time to find a scene taken straight from an action movie. The girl with the blonde hair had collapsed, held in her companion's protective embrace. The two armed girls were approaching them, almost unmistakably with killing instincts running amok. Any seasoned martial artist would have felt it. Those girls were going to be in for a beating if I didn't stop them. We've got you now, thieves! I'm going to personally drag your sorry butts back to town and have you both both put in the stocks. Maybe I'll even show you how it feels to run around without any undies on. Yeah! Although I must admit, having a breeze down there does feel kinda nice. Keeps me feeling fresh and tingly. Hey Kage! Goodness, don't you have any shame? This isn't about you, it's about our undergarments. Stolen! And these two criminals being brought to justice. Hmm. sama it hurts. My head hurts. Shh, it's going to be okay, little one. Hey, guards, if you're so desperate to have your underwear back, then here, catch! Stop it right there! However, before I was able to interrupt the conversation, the silver-haired girl tossed something into the air. Whatever it was, it was flying straight towards my head. The two samurai girls instantly grew flustered. Ah, I can't see! Who the hell tosses a- Peeling the items off my face, I raised them into the air, looking like a professor examining an important sample of what the thieves made- of while the thieves made their escape, so he was holding it up, like... A, a, a pink bra and lacy black panties. Oh boy, I knew this was, wasn't going to end well. Ah, you there! Are you in cahoots with those crafty foxes? And hand back those immediately. Those are evidence of a crime, and not for anyone else to touch. Drop the panties right now! I'm innocent until proven guilty. It's one of the golden rules of the court. Just stop pointing those weapons at me so I can hand over your undies without being turned into shish kebab. What? No, stop. Shut up. Just drop the evidence and walk away. I'm Tsukino Mio, chief of the village guards, and I'm ordering you to drop, drop what you're holding right now. I don't know of any village guards, and I seriously doubt a cop will go around dressed like that while wielding a katana. More importantly, the ground here is muddy and dirty. Are you sure I should drop the evidence here? I mean, I could, but... Yeah! Before I could react, a pink-haired girl lunged towards me, pointing out of her naginata, aiming for my gut. My reflexes caught on just in time, and I was able to palm away the spear as it sailed through the air. It struck upwards on the wooden shaft of the weapon, sending it up into the air, causing the girl to lose her balance. Narumi, I did not order you to attack! Fine, fine, I'll give them back! Jeez, just my luck to find a bunch of crazy girls with weapons. Extending the hand that held- extend- uh, Extending the hand that held the undies, I tried to hand them over. Er, yeah, I tried to hand them over, something that I would soon end up regretting. Ha! You think I'd saw, fall for something so simple? Fool! You may have fooled me once, but that won't- I won't let it happen again. The woman swung her weapon wide, her- Wow. The woman swung her weapon wide, arcing the thick wooden pole into my side before I could dodge. Okay, there's nothing grammatically wrong with that sentence. I can't read. She then lunged forward and grabbed me tightly, pulling my arms behind my back, leaving me with sore ribs and in a prone position. 
I could have fought back, but I figured it would only lead to more fighting. With the possibility of ending up stabbed, I decided to remain passive. The sword-wielding girl stepped forward and grabbed the silky underwear from my hand triumphantly. Hmph. <laughs> Your methods might be crude, but they do get results, Hikage. Tie him up. We'll bring him in for questioning. He probably knows where those pesky thieves are hiding. Right! And people wonder why criminals want to resist arrest at all costs. I mumbled this weakly as the girl with the naginata tied my wrists together with a rope, and I soon felt myself dragged by the duo towards the city. Surely once we're out of the forest, you two will stop this act of yours and let me go, right? As much as I like to fool around, I have more important things to do. The city? <laughs> we're not taking you all the way there. You'll be spending the night in the village cells, thief. Who are you calling a thief? I'm the victim! First, I get undies tossed in my face. Then, I had to deal with physical abuse, and now these accusations? Besides, there's no village around these parts. It's a city. You know, Tsukino Toshi. Silence! Hikage, if he speaks again before we get to the village, you have my permission to knock him unconscious. Sundere tyrant. <laughs> that's funny. And that's how I ended up on my way to a jail cell, cuffed and dragged by two girls, both of whose I started to suspect were crazy. And we'll pick up here on the next episode. So let me give that a good old save. Why would you need so many save slots for this? Anyway, thank you guys so very much for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this one, please consider subscribing. Maybe suggest some other uh, visual novels down in the comments. And until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.